tocando en, nuestros, en nuestro corazón. Pero mira algo, el Señor está tocando la puerta de tu corazón. Él nos va a forzar en tu vida. Él no se va a forzar que tú haces la decisión. No, no te va a, no va a ser un Dios que fuerza. Dios quiere que tú aceptas con tu propia voluntad. Porque Dios no te va a forzar algo. Porque eso es el es Dios. El Dios que te da libertad, el Dios que te da la libertad para tomar la decisión. Porque Él no te va a hacer que tú tomes la decisión con la fuerza. Él quiere que tú lo haces por tu propio voluntad. En el momento que tú lo aceptas con tu propio tiene tu misericordia porque el Señor tiene esa misericordia por ti, porque todos los días que tú vives, todos los días que, que tú abres los ojos es porque el Señor quiere hacer algo contigo, el Señor quiere hacer algo grande contigo es una misericordia, es una bendición que nosotros tenemos vida es lo que el Señor está diciendo yo quiero que tú me sirves yo quiero que tú me conoces yo quiero que tú me conoces con quien soy que hice por ti la cruz el Señor quiere que, que tú le experimentes el Señor quiere que tú la conoces de verdadmente porque en Dios hay perdón hay misericordia and then the Lord loves you Gloria a Dios May the Lord bless each and every one of you that is here tonight. Let me tell you that Jesus loves you, that there is only salvation through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And tonight we are here with one of you perfect. Let me know that Jesus died on the cross for you and I. He rose on the third day with glory and power. And if today you would like to accept him as Lord and Savior, let me tell you that he is here. He is here to accept you. He is here to give you a new name, to fulfill a new purpose in your life. There is many struggles, situations that you might be going through today. But let me tell you that there is only salvation through Jesus Christ. Only Jesus can save you. Only Jesus can break all chains. There's many chains and many different people that they're going through tonight. If you come to the Lord and say you're Jesus Christ, He can break all chains. There's many chains of addiction, of alcohol, drugs, pornography. But let me tell you, only through Jesus Christ. There's salvation and eternal life. God bless you, buddy. Repent, repent. Hallelujah. The Lord is truly come for his church. We must live a life according to God's will, knowing that God is soon to return. God is soon to come. And everybody that is ready is going to be one day face to face with our Lord and Savior. And tonight, I want to let you know that there's only salvation through Jesus Christ because he is the way, he is the life, he is the truth. And if you accept him today, let me tell you that your name can be written in the book of life. On the day of tomorrow when the Lord comes for his church, you can be with him in heaven because the Bible speaks of heaven, let me tell you. But the Bible also speaks about a hell. A hell is a place of torment when many don't believe that it is soon to happen when Jesus will come to uh -huh. for his people. Today is the day when Jesus wants to turn your life around. Today is the day when Jesus wants to make a change in you. Today is the day when you must come to accept them and recognize them as Lord and Savior so that he can come and do things in your life. There's only salvation through Jesus Christ. There's only salvation through Jesus Christ. If you accept him tonight as Lord and Savior, let me tell you that Jesus can do great things in your life. Only through Jesus Christ, there's salvation and eternal life. Today is the day, hallelujah, that the Lord has made. Today is the day where the Lord has made for you to come to repent, to come to accept Him, to come and recognize Him as Lord and Savior. There's no situation or anything that you can be going through that my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, cannot do. There's great 
Jesus is soon to return for his church. And I want to ask you today, are you ready? Are you ready to accept him as Lord and Savior? Are you ready to be before his presence? Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the blood. Hallelujah. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, which cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So, people, there is hope in the name of Jesus. There is hope. You can live. You live a lifestyle of sin. You've been an alcoholic for 20 years. You have anger problems for 20 years. All this stuff can be washed by the blood of Jesus. That's how amazing God is. That's how merciful God is. All the years of sin, all the years of disobedience can be washed away by the blood of Jesus. And what God wants from you is, is faithfulness and commitment to Him. So it's not about just saying, sorry God, do what you want. That's not legit repentance. That's not what God wants. That's fake repentance. That's not true. God wants people who actually want to serve Him. God wants true people who want to live for Him. There's too many lukewarm Christians in America, there's too many lukewarm Christians in this nation, people who say they believe in God, but they don't live for God. There's too many people who say they love Jesus, but they don't keep His commandments. Jesus says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. So everybody want to say, but God is love, God is love. That is true, but do you love God? That is the question, do you love God? Everybody knows God loves them, but do you love God? Do you love Him? Do you love God? And I'm not talking about saying, oh yeah, I love God, He lets me get drunk. That's not love. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying, do you love keeping God's commandments? Do you love obeying God? That's what I'm talking about. Do you love living in righteousness? Do you love reading your Bible? Do you love praying? Do you love the things of God? Do you love the things of God? Do you love God? I'm not talking about saying, oh, I love God. He lets me do what I want. No, I'm not talking about that. Do you love being obedient to God? And if that's a no, folks, then you don't actually don't love God. So you have to read the Bible to know what's the definition of love. Because God, God has defined love. You, you know, we don't make up our definition of love in our heads. God has defined, hey, this is love, and this is not love. So God says, hey, this is love, and this is not love. The Bible says love is kind, love is patient, love is not boast, love is not envy, love is not rejoice in iniquity. So love has a definition already by God, so we cannot make our own definition of love in our hands and be like, hey, bro, I get drunk, but I love it, so it's good. That's not how that works. You don't make up your own thing of love and put a label on it and be like, well, it's love and I, I can do it. That's not how that works. That's not how that works. We cannot reinvent the wheel. We cannot reinvent the wheel. You know what I'm saying? God has made everything set. God has made everything perfect. But human beings, you the people, you twist God's word. You twist God's word. And God says, hey, this is love. You people call perversion love. They're like, hey man, you know what I'm saying? I like this girl, I love this girl. You don't even really love her. You're fornicating. You're fornicators. Fornication is not love, folks. Having sex with people that you're not married to is not love. It's called lust. Lust and love are completely different. Lust and love are not the same thing. So we gotta come out of lust. We have, we have to come out of that lust and actually walk in love. Because the Bible says that the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. So you have to love God with everything, and the seventh commandment is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. So yes, people, God wants you to love, but God wants you to love the things He loves. God wants you to love the way He loves. God does not want you to love the way you want to do what you want. That's not love. That's not love. This is not a free for all, folks. This is not a free for all. God has standards, God has boundaries, and God wants you to stay in those boundaries for your benefit. This is for your benefit, folks, because guess what? If you get outside God's boundaries, you're gonna be the person with the heartbreak. You're gonna be the person out here losing all your money to strippers and stuff. You're gonna be the person out here being scammed along the the street because you go outside God's boundaries. You went outside God's, God's boundaries, now you're out here. Hey, you're out here with your heart broken. You're out here looking like a fool because you think you know more than God's commandments. But God says, obey me. God gave you his commandments so you can prosper. 
God's commandments are for your benefit, people. If you don't have God's, if you don't have God's commandments in your heart, if you don't for God's commandments in your heart, you're gonna, you're gonna be the person that's gonna hurt. You're gonna see the consequences for it. And this is where all this stuff is happening. People got heartbreak. People get suicidal. People have depression. The person's outside God's boundaries. So God says, you know, don't be out here getting drunk. Don't be out here getting high and stuff. You put yourself in bad positions. You open your body up to all kinds of demonic spirits. And you wonder why you can't control yourself. And you wonder why you have any problems. Because you keep going outside God's boundaries. Folks, if you go outside God's boundaries, you're going to be cursed. You're going to be cursed. But you will be blessed if you stay inside God's laws. You will be blessed. Hallelujah. God will bless you with a good family. God will bless you with a wife, with a true husband. God will bless you with obedient children. A lot of children nowadays are disobedient. A lot of kids nowadays, they cut up their mom, they hate their parents. They do all types of drugs in their parents' house because as parents, you don't teach your kids the love of God. You don't teach your kids about God's commandments and that's why your kids don't respect you. That's why your kids don't respect you. The, the, the fourth connection, the fifth commandment says to love, honor your mother and your father. It's so in God's Ten Commandments to respect your parents. It's in God's commandments to respect your parents. But there's so many disobedient kids in the, in the world. There's so many kids in the world who just hate their parents. They cuss at their parents. And it's horrible. This is what happens when people don't teach your kids the laws of God. And as a parent, you're going to be held accountable for not teaching your kids the laws of God. And that's a sad thing if the whole family goes to hell. The mom, the dad, and the, all the kids going to hell because they're ignorant to the laws of God. It's a sad reality, people. And that's why this country is so bad in families. The divorce rate is so high in America. There's so many single mothers out here. There's so many fatherless kids out here because people don't have God's commandments. People just want to do what they want. And the kids are suffering. The kids are suffering for it. But who, who cares about the kids? Who cares about the kids? A lot of people, you don't care about the kids nowadays. The kids are being victimized. The kids are in danger. And as parents, are you protecting your kids from the evil world? Are you protecting your kids from all these evil people working? Because this world is getting more, more and more evil. And if you don't teach your kids wisdom and knowledge, your kids are going to fall under, under the influence of this evil system, of this demonic system. Because a lot of adults in this generation are very childish. A lot of adults are 40, you're 50, you're 60, but you're still out like a teenager. This, this is really, folks, this is really bad. You have adults who act like kids. You have adults who act like teenagers. They have an attitude with God. They have a problem with God because God says, you know, you can't watch porn, you can't masturbate without throwing a tantrum. You have the best on your throwing tantrums. As an adult, you're supposed to be an example for the younger generation. But as adults first, these adults are not good role models for the kids. These generation of adults in America have failed. We have failed the youth in America. Adults in America, we have failed the youth. And this is why this generation is so twisted. This generation is so confused. This generation is so depressed and suicidal because the adults do not teach them about God. The adults do not teach them about the commandments of God. But some of the adults out here, you're out here, you just want to get drunk, you just want to party. But what about your kids? Do your kids know about God? Where's your kids going? Does your kids know about true love? Do your kids know about purity and holiness? How can you as a parent be out here having fun, getting drunk, getting wasted? But your kids are ignorant, your kids don't know God, your kids are suicidal. Your kids have depression. Your kids are sleeping around in your house when you're not home. How can you be okay with this as parents in America? People, God's going to judge this nation. God's going to judge this nation for all the wickedness, for the failures, all the failures this country indulges in. It's not that you made a mistake. It's because you people love the mistake. You glory in your shame. You can make this stuff like it's fun. Kids don't know right from wrong no more. People don't know what's right and what's wrong. People think everything's about opinion. 
people think, well, that's your opinion, bro. Then that's your, but, but no, it's not about opinions. It's about facts. We don't need opinions. I don't care about your opinion. We need truth. Your opinion doesn't matter. It matters what God says. Your opinion does not matter. What matters is what God says. If God says don't do it, then don't do it. It's really that simple. You don't need a debate. You don't need an hour-long debate on morals. God made morals. God made, God made the standard of good and evil. God says this is good and this is evil. And you just gotta obey it. It's not complicated. God is not making it complicated for you. But since you have sin, since you have darkness, you wanna argue. You wanna, you wanna question God. You as a human being, you are dust. You wanna question the eternal God, the everlasting God. You wanna question God in his morals. The Bible says, the Bible says, human beings, we're like grass in the eyes of God. You come and you go, we're like grass. And your glory is like the, is like the flower of grass. So you have a lot of human beings, you have a lot of temporary human beings when they're questioning eternal God. That's foolishness. That doesn't make any sense at all. We don't have time to be wasting trying to question God. We just spend this time here to know God and start trying to argue with God. Because in the day of judgment, you're not going to be questioning God. You're not going to be arguing, going back and forth with the creator of the universe. The Bible says it's a perfect thing to fall to the hands of a living God. The stand before God, you're going to be full of terror, people. You're going to be full of fear. All of you folks are scared of insects. You're scared of little things. Imagine standing before God. Imagine standing before the holy God. You're going to be full of terror, people, especially if you're not born again, especially if you're a sinner. Because all the sin on you, when God's pure, holy light is going to be in front of you, you're going to be full of shame. You're going to be full of shame to stand before God and all your sin. And you see God's perfection. You see God's glory. You see God, you see how perfect and just God is. But you know yourself, you fail. You know yourself, you're unworthy. And this is why you have to be covered in the blood of Jesus. Because we are unworthy. All have fall short from the glory of God. All have fall short from the glory of God. But God was so gracious, God was so merciful that he sent his son Jesus to make us righteous, to make us pure. Jesus Christ became a curse for us. Jesus Christ came, became a curse for us. The person who made the earth became a curse for us humans. That's how much God loves you. That's how much God cares about you. Even though you don't care about him, he still cares enough about you to die for you. This is real love, folks. This is real love. God say love the world. God say love the world, which is past tense. Because people, judgment is coming. The book of Revelation is opening before you. And God is going to destroy the earth in fire. God is not going to let wickedness just continue here on earth. God's Vegas is not going to last forever, people. This place is not going to last forever. This place will be destroyed. This place will go down into fire. And if you love this place, you will go down with it. It's not going to be worth it, people. It's not going to be worth it. You have to live for something greater than yourself. You have to live for something greater than this planet. And it's the kingdom of heaven in Jesus Christ. Because everything on this planet is going to go away. Everything on this planet is going to disappear. God's going to make a new heavens and a new earth. God's going to make a new planet and a new heaven. So this world right here is not going to be remembered. It's not, even, it's not going to matter when Jesus Christ makes, uh, makes everything new. So it's, it's not about being famous. If you're famous here on earth, it's not going to matter in the next world. If you're rich right now on this planet, it's not going to matter in the next world. Because the next world is going to be forever. The next world is going to be eternal. This world right here, it has a time limit. It has a cap to it. But God, when he comes back, he's going to establish his, his kingdom here on earth. That's going to last forever. He is the everlasting God. He is the everlasting God. Hallelujah. He's the living God. So we got to turn from our idols. we got to turn away from our idols and serve the living God. What do you worship, people? What do you, who do you worship? What's in your heart? Do you worship the, the statue of Mary? If you do, you have to stop doing that. Throw away all your statues. Throw away your Buddha statues. Throw away your Catholic Mary statues. 
God is not one to worship statues. Statues cannot answer your prayers. A, stat a statue cannot help you people. You have more power than a statue. You, you have more life than a statue. So why do we bow down to statues? Why human beings bowing down to statues? What are we doing? God hates this. God said the Israelites to not bow down before statues because a statue cannot save you. A statue cannot hear your cries. When you're crying out in your bedroom, that statue of Mary does not hear you. It does not care. So throw away your statues. When you cry out, cry out to God. God is a spirit. God is a spirit. And God is everywhere. God is omnipresent. God is omnipresent. God came down on the earth as Jesus. So God was here on the earth and he was in heaven at the same time because he's omnipresent. He's all powerful. So God hears your prayers. God hears your cries. God knows your concerns. And God wants you to cry out to him. Cry out to him. Don't cry out to statues. Don't cry out to the bears and stuff. Don't go to your girlfriend and boyfriend. Go to God. Go to Jesus. Only Jesus Christ can change you. Only Jesus Christ can give you peace. Only Jesus Christ will give you the truth. So if the Bible says, and the Son is set free, is free indeed. And the truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. You cannot be set free in a lie. You cannot live life in peace. Your lifestyle is a lie. A lot of people, your lifestyle is a lie. Because it makes you feel comfortable. But if something is off, something is off, but Jesus Christ will put everything in perfect alignment. Everything will be in perfect order when Jesus Christ comes back because God made everything in order. Everything was made in order. The sun goes down, the sun rises, you have four seasons, it comes at the same time. Everything God does is in order. But mankind, we're out of order. Human beings, you are out of order. And this is why the world is in sin. That's why the world is such a terrible place. Because you have broken God's order. You have broken God's commandments. And now there's no peace on earth. There is no peace on earth. Because mankind says, God, we don't want order. We want chaos. There's no peace in chaos. There's no love in chaos. But God wants you to live in his commandments to live in order. Your lifestyle must be in order in God's laws. God's laws are holy. They're perfect. God's laws are perfect, people. The Bible says to be perfect as God is perfect. And you can only do that by the help of Jesus. You can only do that by being covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. It's not impossible to be perfect. It's not hard to be perfect when you are under the blood of Jesus. Because guess what, people? You are made perfect. Adam and Eve were perfect. Adam and Eve were perfect until they went against God. So God makes everything perfect. God made everything perfect. But mankind, when you said, God, I don't trust you, you became imperfect. And this is why we do evil. We do good sometimes. This is why we do evil, because we're fallen. We're fallen creatures, we're fallen. But Jesus Christ came to redeem us. He came to redeem us from the curse of death, the law of sin and death. But there's laws of the universe. There's laws of gravity. There's laws of motion. There's a law of sin and death. The wages of sin is death. The reason you die is not random. You die is because of sin. Sin is why we die as human beings. But guess what? Jesus in the book of Revelation says, God is going to destroy death and hell. God is going to destroy death itself. And that's pretty awesome if you're a child of God. Because we're going to live forever. God, the Bible says God is the God of the living, not the God of the dead. God is the God of the living. But the Bible says in the book of Psalms, the people in hell cannot praise God. People in hell cannot praise God. That is the God of the living, not the dead. So God is going to destroy death. This is why Jesus Christ conquered death, to give you eternal life. To give you eternal life. God wants you to live forever with him. God does not want you to perish. Jesus says, repent or you will likewise perish. To repent is to have a change of mind that leads to a change of action. 
You must change your mind or sin. You must change your mind or what you think is good. When the world says, hey man, this lifestyle is fun, you must be like, no, it's not, bro. This lifestyle is not fun because God said it's not. You must say, this lifestyle is not good because God said it's not good. You must have a change of mind to change the way you live your life. That which true repentance is. You just don't say sorry, you just do what you want. That's not repentance, people. You cannot play around with God. This country lives playing around with Jesus. Jesus Christ is not a 1970s hippie. Jesus Christ is not a hippie, people. Jesus Christ is God Almighty. Jesus Christ is God Almighty. So we cannot treat him like a hipster. We cannot treat Jesus Christ as some type of liberal. Jesus Christ came down here to establish the law and to fulfill the law. Jesus Christ came down to fulfill prophecy. Jesus Christ is coming back to reign on earth. Jesus Christ is coming back to reign. He come, he's coming down here, people, to reign on earth. And all the heathen will be in subjection to the, to the people of God, the sons of God, the saints of God. They're going to reign with Christ forever and ever. It's going to be such a beautiful time when Jesus Christ comes back. But before then, there's going to be tribulation. There's going to be tests. God's going to test the whole world. God's going to test your faith to see if you put your faith in. When times get tough, what do you call on? When times get tough, what do you call on? You have a bad day at work. What do you go to? Do you go to the bars? Do you go to drugs? Do you go to Jesus? If you go, what you go to when you're sad, that's your God. When you have a bad day at work, you go to the beard, that's your God. Who do you go to when you have a bad day? If it's not Jesus Christ, that's a problem. That's a problem. If you don't go to God, to your problem. So this is why we're saying our trust in the Lord. We cannot run away from God. We cannot run away from God. God already sees you. God already knows your problem. Anyway, there's no point in trying to hide from God. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are in every place, the head of the evil and the good. So God hears your dirty jokes. God sees all the weed you're smoking. God sees all your pornography. God sees all the disgusting stuff you watch at night. And God wants you to stop. God wants you to turn away from it. God wants you to purify your heart. God wants to cleanse you. Because if you don't repent right now, first, God's going to expose you in the day of judgment. All your evil deeds, all the evil stuff you watch on all that night, God's going to expose in your face in the day of judgment in front of everybody. It's going to be a very shameful time for a lot of sinners because right now you think you're on top of the world. You think life's a giant party, but the party is going to end when God says it's going to end. When God sends judgment, it's going to be no more party time. When death starts happening, when people start dying, when people start being attacked, when nations start being all crazy, it's not going to be time to party. Right now, folks, the world is unraveling. The world, people are becoming mad. People are losing their minds. We have riots. We have people burning down buildings. We have people getting shot for no reason. We have people in the streets butt naked in front of kids. The world is going undone. And if you're, if you're not on the side of Jesus, folks, you're, you're on the other side of evil. There's only two sides. There's good and evil, light and darkness. There's no in-between. There's no yin yang sign. This is no yin yang. There's only light and darkness. The Bible says God is light and there is no darkness inside him. God is perfect. God is good. God cannot do evil. God cannot do bad. It's impossible to God to do evil. It's, not, it's, it's impossible. God's character is goodness. Everything God does is good. Even if you don't like it, even if it makes you mad, it's still good in the eyes of God. It is still righteous that God did it because God sees everything in eternity perspective. God has a better perspective than you. You see things in one way, but God sees things from the past, present, and future. God sees everything. God is outside of time. So that's why what God sends judgment is righteous. God does what he wants. God's a righteous judge. Your goal is not to question God. Your goal, your mission is to obey God. The Bible says to fear God and keep his commandments. That's the whole duty. Your only mission here on earth is to fear God and keep his commandments. You don't have to be TikTok famous. You don't have to be rich. 
You don't have to be a playboy, but you do got to fear God and keep his commandments. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter how poor you are. It doesn't matter how rich you are. God still commands you to keep his commandments. All rich people and all poor people are going to die the same way. We're all going to the grave, folks. We're going to the grave with your Gucci belt. We're going to the grave with your Gucci shoes, too. With the Gucci scarf, with the Gucci glasses. You're going to the grave with the poor person. You're going to the grave with the homeless. We're all the same in the eyes of God. No one is above God. No one is going to exalt themselves above Jesus Christ. God will humble all those who are proud. God's going to humble everyone who thinks they're proud. But those who, are, those who are humble in heart, God will exalt those people. God will exalt those people who are humble. Those people that get the will of God. Those people who live for Jesus Christ when the whole world did not like them. Those people who live for Jesus when their whole family went against them. Those people who live for Jesus and die for it. There are Christians overseas being killed for Jesus. There are Christians being burnt alive. There are Christians being chopped up. Oh, because they love Jesus. They didn't do nothing wrong. This is just because this world hates Christ. This world hates the light. This world hates truth. People love darkness. People do not like the light. Do you like the light? Jesus says people do not come to the light because their deeds are evil. The reason why people don't come to Jesus is because they know in their heart you know, their lifestyle is evil and they don't want Jesus to pretty much correct them. This generation is not like correction. People say, don't judge me, bro. You don't know my lifestyle, man. You don't know me. I don't have to know you. I don't need to know you. But Jesus needs to correct you. Jesus needs to change your heart, though. He has to correct you. The Bible says if you don't like correction, that's a bad thing. Because God still corrects us as church children of God. We still be corrected too. So if you're a person that doesn't like to be corrected, the Bible says you're going to be destroyed. Because you're going to be very stubborn. You don't think you know it all. I was talking to a lady earlier, and she thought she had better morals than God. She thought she was better than God. This is the, this is the generation mentality. People think you have better standards of God. Because you say, hey man, but God kills people, so God's a bad guy. You know what God kills people? You know what God will uh, get rid of people? Because of sin. Because